Today I'm going to talk about chamfers. What is a chamfer? Why do we have them? How do I figure out the right dimensions for a chamfer? How do I model a chamfer? And how do I draw a chamfer? What is a chamfer and why do we have them? Whenever you have two faces that meet each other, they form an edge. These edges can be sharp and some chamfers are there for safety while handling. A chamfer is a way of breaking the sharp edge to a softer angle. We don't want to see 90 degree edges everywhere. Sometimes a 45 degree edge is what we want, and this is called a chamfer. Some edges can be worn away. Let's say we have a six-sided die for playing board games. The chamfer is to improve the wear handling of the part, which means that every time we roll the die, it hits the table, but we don't want a sharp corner to hit the table. One, that could damage the table. And two, the die itself could actually get rounded over, and that would change the weight distribution of the die, thus changing the odds. So we put in the chamfer. When the edge hits the table, it's not actually the edge. It's a very th small face. Finally, some edges are close to interlocking or mating parts. When we go to machine a part, we may have subsequent machining operations, such as threading. We may want to put a die, which is kind of like a nut, but it's designed for cutting a thread onto a screw or bolt. We may want to be able to put that die on straight and true, and having sharp corners and edges might make that a little bit more difficult. We put a chamfer on, and it helps guide things into place. So here is Fusion 360 and I'm going to draw a part. Let's say, let's pretend that we're going to make our own sort of like a custom bolt. Um, so I'm going to push C for circle and we're going to put a circle here, let's say 30 millimeters. So we're drawing the head of the bolt first. I've selected the circle. I'm pushing E for extrude and I'll pull the bolt back 10 millimeters there. Now I'm going to push C for another circle and this shaft is what's going to be the threaded section. Um, so we'll make this diameter 16 millimeters and we'll push E for extrude and extrude that out 50 millimeters there. The exact numbers don't matter. Um, it's just for the purpose of a video here. So let's pretend that this is our bolt. Um, we're going to want a chamfer here to be able to put a, ta uh, a die around this bolt. And we're going to want to put a chamfer here so that when we go to machine the bolt, specifically this head, that's highlighted in blue right now. When we go to hold the part in the collet by this shaft there, we don't want any edges that might have a raised burr to interfere with the collet that holds the shaft. So we're going to put a chamfer there to knock that down and, and basically um, make the part hold itself, get held true in the collet. So let's start off with a chamfer there. And the chamfer, half a millimeter. Well, I think a 16 millimeter thread is t a two millimeter pitch. So let's go with a two millimeter chamfer just, just to see how it turns out. Then let's put the thread in. So we'll go create thread. Yep, 16 by two. And then let's put in the chamfer here to help things get held in the collet. And while we're at it, we may as well put in a chamfer on the top as well. So what I've done is I select the first chamfer with the mouse, hold down control and select the second edge there. And now I go up to modify chamfer. Two millimeters looks a little big there, so um, let's try 0 0.25, which a quarter of a millimeter or 10, 15 thou, somewhere in that ballpark, not a bad sort of a chamfer to have um, for sort of just 
breaking an edge to improve handling, and this will also definitely break any burrs that have formed. And that's looking quite reasonable. And the head here, well, we can put any sort of a, a driving mechanism in. I kind of like Allen keys. I'm not actually going to make this, um, but what might actually be a sensible thing that is easy to make is to put in a slot for a screwdriver. So let's just do that here. Let's make it a flathead screwdriver. Let's say dimension of two millimeters. From there to this point, and what we can do is we can actually put this in as a parameter. And so the way how we do that was we click on this dimension here, the two millimeters. We can say divide by two, and this creates a little miniature formula to say we want the distance from this lower line to the center point to be half of whatever the slot width is. There's a couple of different ways we could have done this. We could have drawn a center line through the middle here and then used symmetry over in the corner to say we want it to be symmetrical about that center line. Uh, but this way was just sort of convenient. Now let's now let's make the um the slot. So I've selected the face, push E for extrude, and I'm just going to lower it down into here. And one of the nice things about Fusion is it automatically changes from a new body to cut whenever you cut into a whenever you cut into a part. So five millimeters is probably heaps. And whoa, yes, that's something to watch out for. Um, edit the feature, the chamfer actually separated this inner circle around the edge here from the outer edge, so we probably want to select this part as well and come over and just make sure that we've got the whole lot selected to be uh, cut out. And there we go, there's our large flathead screwdriver. Ah, uh, sorry, large flathead screw. So I'm going to save this and in the next little segment uh, we'll look at how to actually draw this. So this is the drawing portion of the chamfer video and this is the screw that we want to draw and to start off a drawing we'll go to drawing, new, uh, new drawing from design, full assembly, it, it's just a one part assembly so it doesn't matter, and the sheet size, if you've got an A3 printer by all means go for it, if you've got only an A4 printer like I do, I like to print out in landscape because when working on the lathe most of your parts are sort of long, longish and thinnish and having this longer dimension along the wider edge of the sheet of paper just seems to make more sense to me. So we've got the drawing view open and when we go to draw it we want the scale to be as big as possible because there's no there's no point in squinting and looking at a tiny drawing when you've got all this huge open real estate around it. So let's try two to one and left and we've still got a lot of open space around here four to one's probably too big let's try three yeah three to one's looking nice so let's place this down here and we've got a side view of our screw if we were so this drawing would be just for the the turning on the lathe and we want um, 
if we wanted a, a milling portion, I might I might do a separate sheet for that where I see the top of the head, um, but I'm going to ignore that for this because this is a chamfer video. So I push D for dimension, and that gives me a linear dimension. Uh, Oh, it gives me like an automagic sort of dimension uh, that can be the linear, angular, radius, or diameter, or whatever aligned is. I'm not I'm not sure what that is. I'm wanting a linear dimension, so select these two points, and we've got fifteen point eight two. Now the reason why I've got fifteen point eight two instead of sixteen is probably because the class of thread, and this is a topic that could be several videos, classes and tolerances on threads. Um, the, the class of thread is probably a G class thread. If it were an H class, it would be probably 16 here. I'd have to consult some tables to confirm that, but that's, that's kind of what I'm guessing. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we called out for a, a two millimeter chamfer on this on this um, diameter here when we assumed it was going to be 16 millimeters. This is going to cause us just something to think about when we do the next when we do the next um, dimension, which is going to be. Uh, linear boom boom this dimension here now I think we called out a two millimeter chamfer but this is 1.91 and why is that well that was because we thought originally this was going to be 16 millimeters we come in two but this is now 15.82 and this point here hasn't changed, but this point here has because it would have been sticking out sort of about here-ish, and now the diameter's shrunk in, so it's gone into here. Now this 1.91 dimension is, this is okay because the, the everything is still the same except for this outer diameter. Uh, the other the other dimension that we want to stick in is the angle from here to this second edge and it can either be 135 or it can be 45 and it's the same angle on the drawing it's just what is your reference surface and which way around the semicircle so here we can see that we're going counterclockwise from like the three o'clock position up to um, what sort of looks like around about one o'clock and around this way we're starting at nine o'clock and going back to that that same time but I'm gonna do a 45 here because it's sort of it's what makes sense because if we're extending this edge out and then we're going going in to cut it off it's going to be that 45 degree. It's not going to be, well, it still is going to be 135 from this edge, but it makes more sense when we go to pick out our cutter to go, it's going to be 45 from this extended imaginary line. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how to draw, how to draw like the chamfer itself. Going into like two decimal places on a on a chamfer like this, probably not necessary. You could probably just say two and call it that. Um, and same for fifteen point eight two here. You could probably just say sixteen and then put in the tolerances down in a corner somewhere so that uh, the machinist knows exactly what what you're inferring, but if you're just going to be turning the part yourself these sorts of numbers you can you can make appropriate judgments judgment calls when you actually go to machine the part based on sort of the capabilities of your skills and of your machine um, there's no sense in drawing something and putting some like 50 decimal places in here because you're probably not going to be able to maintain those tolerances and 
if you send it out to be machined, you're probably going to be paying a lot more for a machinist to pull up a tolerance and, and maintain or hold that tolerance when it doesn't really matter. Um, on the topic of, of things that don't matter, well, here we've got uh, an edge, a chamfer, that we can just break with a file. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly how large this dimension is, we can just hit it with a file. And the same on the top here, or on the back. Um, you might go in with a parting blade to create this whole part, go in with a parting blade, and just before you cut it off, you get a file and just quickly and carefully in on the edge, take the, take the edge off, and it's going to be safe to handle. Um, I think that's probably enough on drawing chamfers.